Hello and welcome to ELA Explained. My name is Andrew Rasoha and today we're going to talk about irony in literature. The word irony comes from ancient Greek. Greek philosophers used this term to describe a rhetorical strategy whereby the speaker made statements that did not reflect what he or she actually thought or wanted to say. Socratic irony, for example, involved the speaker pretending to be ignorant about an issue and asking questions in order to clarify the situation. These carefully chosen questions led his or her opponents to absurd conclusions and often made people reconsider their original point of view. Nowadays, irony is generally understood as a subtly humorous perception of inconsistency that gives a statement or an event a very different significance. Very often, irony is divided into three types – verbal, situational and dramatic. But the term has a very long history, and throughout its history, irony acquired different meanings depending on the time period or the author, and one can find many other subtypes of irony. In this video, we will discuss only these three types. Verbal irony occurs when the speaker says something that he or she doesn't really mean. Unlike the other two types, verbal irony is intentional, and should the audience fail to recognize it, the speaker risks ending up in an awkward situation having to explain to the audience what he or she was actually trying to say. Mark Twain is very well known for his ironic remarks. In this example, the second sentence, which seemingly supports the first one, actually undermines it. The fact that the author had to quit smoking multiple times disproves the point that it's an easy thing to do. The author obviously pretends to be oblivious to the contradiction in his reasoning, and it is this faint naivety that makes the statement so memorable. Situational irony occurs when the expected outcome of a situation and its actual outcome contradict each other. Unlike verbal irony, it is not intentional and it often requires more context. The Cop and the Anthem by O. Henry tells a story of a homeless person, Soapy, who wants to find shelter for the winter by getting himself arrested and going to jail. After all of his attempts to get arrested fail, Soapy hears a church organ playing an anthem and experiences a spiritual revival. He decides to stop being a tramp and to look for a job the next day. But as he makes plans for his new life, he is approached by a policeman who arrests him for loitering and the next morning Soapy gets sentenced to three months in jail. Loitering, eh? Guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, if it pleases the court. Ooh, one of those argumentative types, eh? Where did you pick him up? Coming out of church. Church? Yeah, Your Honor, I just stepped in to refresh my soul. I'd just undergone the most salutary spiritual experience. I'm a reformed man, and I, I, today I'd plan to apply for a position. Find any candlesticks on him? Oh, no, no, Your Honor, I assure you. Maybe he was trying to rob the poor box. Oh, no, no, Your Honor. I didn't Honor. find a thing on him, not even a dime. Ninety days. For what? Vagrancy. No visible means of support. Next case. This ending, typical of O'Henry's short stories, is a good example of situational irony, where the actual outcome of a character's actions contradicts the expectations of both the character and the reader. Dramatic irony appears when the audience knows more about a situation than a character does. Based on this knowledge, the audience expects an outcome different from that expected by the character. And this knowledge adds a different meaning to the character's actions and words. This kind of irony can often be found in tragedies, and it is then called tragic irony. In Shakespeare's tragedy Macbeth, the main character and his wife are plotting to murder King Duncan, who comes to stay in their castle. The king, who does not suspect anything and trusts Macbeth, praises the castle but his words carry a different meaning for the people in the audience who know that this castle, which has a pleasant seat, is where the king is going to die. This guest 
best of summer. The temple haunting martlet does approve by his loved mansionry that the heaven's breath smells wooingly here. No jutty, freeze, buttress, nor coin of vantage, but this bird hath made his pendant bed and procreate cradle. Where they most breed and haunt, I have observed, the air is delicate. These were the main three types of irony that are often found in literary analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching and goodbye.